Right behind Walcott comes Ezard Charles, ready for his ninth defense of the title. This is the second time he's defended his crown against Walcott. Ezard tipped the scales at 182, a bit lighter than expected, and 12 pounds lighter than Joe's 194. Hold it, boys. That's good. All right, now smile. Oh, come on, smile. Helping Charles into his robe is Jimmy Brown, the champion's able trainer. Helping Walcott into his is cornerman Dan Florio. The challenger greets George Jones, chairman of the commission, under whose auspices this championship bout will be held tonight at Forbes Field. It's a big day for Pittsburgh, playing host to the first heavyweight title fight in its history. Now, time for the big fight. First to enter the ring is the champion from Cincinnati, Ohio, Ezard Charles. Then the challenger from Merchantville, New Jersey, Joe Walker, followed by manager Felix Bocchicchio. Joe claims he's 37 years old. Veteran ringsiders just wink and tell you the old pro must be well into his 40s. Charles was just 30. That's Jake Mintz leaning through the ropes to shake hands with reporters. Mintz is one of Charles' co-managers. In the dark suit, with his back to us, is Tom Tannis, the other co-manager. More than 28,000 fans have paid a whopping $245,000 tonight to see this championship bout and to cheer their hero, either Walcott or Charles. The fighters meet at the center of the ring for last minute instructions from referee Buck McTiernan. And in a moment, round one. Charles, the heavy favorite in dark trunks, going for his 73rd triumph, his 46th by knockout. In 78 outings, he lost only five and drew one. Walcott has won 47 of his 65 fights, 29 by KO. He lost 15 and drew one. Both men beginning cautiously. Charles, you remember, ascended to the throne left vacant by Joe Lewis. Later, he defeated the great ex-champion, but he's never been regarded as the bomber's equal. Charles moves inside a right by Walcott. Walcott is a good right-hand hitter. He had Lewis on the deck three times in two fights, and many think he beat Lewis out of the title in their 1947 match in Madison Square Garden. Walcott is probably a better hitter than Charles, but Charles, up till now, has had all the right moves when fighting Jersey Joe. At his peak, Charles was one of the best defensive fighters of the era, a very fine defensive stylist. He'll blunt your power. He'll move in on you and smother your punches, just as you'll see him doing here in round one. Charles has won two 15-round decisions over Walcott in Chicago and in Detroit. Walcott has a weight edge of 12 pounds, you remember, and he seems to be in better shape than in previous bouts, even in better shape than Charles. Charles about to cut loose with a left hook to the body but it's partially blocked. Jersey Joe's real name is Arnold Raymond Cream. His father was born on St. John's Island, Barbados, West Indies, the same birthplace as that of the original Joe Walcott, the Barbados Demon. When young Arnold Cream began his fistic career, he so admired the original Walcott that he adapted his name and has retained it ever since. Walcott about to try a right to the head. That was a glancing blow, but you could see the power he generates with that punch.
Joe ducks into a crouch. You see him faint with his right, only to catch a right to the body by Charles. Moments before the bell ending round one, an even round with neither man hurt. Jersey Joe Walcott in white trunks answers the bell for round two by probing with his left. Now watch. As Charles tries a lead left, Walcott shuffles back. He's highly maneuverable. He jigs, he bounces. He dances in a style known as the Jersey Shuffle. Later on, we'll see that his shuffle does more than carry him back out of range. It distracts the opponent and breaks up his line of fire. Look at Joe using little head and shoulder feints as he seeks an opening in which to counter Charles. It's a close round so far, but we're going to see Ezra Charles gaining a slight edge. Charles about to try a long left to the face, but Walcott pulls away. Watch him return a right to the body before the champion ties him up. Jersey Joe is the heavier muscled man. Charles has the more wiry frame, but Walcott has the more powerful build. Both men are six feet tall. Both have the same reach, 74 inches. Walcott about to land a left hook as they flurry. Then again, Charles ties him up. You notice the champion has been tying up his man quite effectively here in round two. Look, as Charles rushes in, Walcott hoists him off his feet. A tip off that Joe has the advantage in weight. He's the bigger, tougher guy tonight. He lifted Charles with one arm. Walcott's guard is low. He's about to move in, leaving himself wide open. An easy target for Ezzard's glancing left to the face. That punch failed to land with authority, though, and you can see that Walcott is unhurt. There's Joe working behind his left, and now you'll see him pound his gloves together before throwing a right. Frequently, the challenger pounds his gloves that way, a nervous mannerism he displays before going to the attack. Again, Joe pounds his gloves together. He's noted for his rhythm. Watch him circle to his left, then to his right, then bob and weave with an unmistakable beat, then pound his gloves again, anticipating that left hook to the body. Yes, Joe's got rhythm. The end of round two. A better round for Charles. Ezra Charles in dark trunks holds a slight edge over Jersey Joe Walcott as he answers the bell for round three of a scheduled 15 round championship bout. So far, Ezra has failed to display the sharpness he demonstrated in his previous encounters with Joe possibly because of the weight discrepancy. Remember, the challenger at 194 is 12 pounds heavier than the champion at 182. In their last meeting, a few months earlier, Ezard scaled 186 and thought the extra weight slowed him down. Charles moved to short range, but failed to land a solid punch to the body. Walker delivers a stiff jab to the face. Now another of Walcott's distinctive trademarks. Watch the challenger drop his hands, hike up his trunks, then wing in a left to the body. That hook was partially blocked by Charles' forearm. Both men working behind their lefts, 
More proof of Walcott's agility. As Charles tries a right, Joe shuffles back out of range. Walcott shuffles, hitches, then again throws that left to the body. That's the second time he's used that maneuver here in round three. Joe's coming back well after getting away to a slow start in the two previous rounds. This is the challenger's fifth crack at the title, you recall. Charles remains unbeaten since Elmer Violent Ray turned the trick in July of 1947, four years earlier. See what happens when they break? They'll feint each other, looking for an opening. They'll find it, too. You'll see Jersey Joe land a right to the jaw, and Charles comes back with his right, then a left, in the best slugging match of the fight so far. Walkett comes in with a left-right combination, but his right was a bit short and merely grazed the chin of backpedaling Charles. Jersey Joe Walcott putting on the pressure in the final seconds of round three. The best round yet for the challenger. Jersey Joe Walcott in white trunks won the last round after dropping round two to Ezra Charles. Since the first stanza was a standoff, the fight is even going into round four. Charles' right eye is beginning to swell, the result of a hard left hook by Walcott in the third round. Ezard at short range again fails to land any body blows. Jersey Joe has been tying him up effectively. A stiff left jab by Walcott. And Charles counters with his jab. Both men are old pros in the ring. This is their third meeting, remember? And they know each other's moves. Watch Joe try a sneak right uppercut. He's famous for his sneak right hand. Frequently, Joe throws long lead rights when they're least expected. Right hand bombs hurled with no preliminary jab or hook. That's the way he caught Joe Lewis in their two fights. Charles, well protected. You'll see Walker try a right that goes over Charles' left shoulder. Ezard about to dig back to the body at short range. But again, Walker ties him up. Referee Buck McTiernan cautions Walker to make a clean break, and Joe nods his head. Both looking for an opening for their rights, and both men extremely cautious. With his fifth challenge for the heavyweight crown, Walker established a record without precedent in ring history. Never before had a fighter made so many bids for the title. Joe wants desperately to become champion. It's a dream he's nurtured ever since the early 30s when he won his first purse, $15, after a tough battle with Cowboy Wallace. Joe's early career was a string of hardship after hardship. For a year and a half, he was forced to accept nine and a half dollars in weekly relief checks in order to feed his wife and six children. In between comebacks, Walker held a number of construction jobs, drove an ice truck, mixed cement, labored for the WPA. He was a mighty discouraged fighter until 1944 when he signed with manager Felix Bocchicchio, the key man in his corner tonight. Under Bocchicchio's guidance, Walker emerged as the leading contender for the crown. And now here he is, growing stronger as Charles grows weaker. Another Cinderella man of the ring taking charge of the favored champion here in round four. Here comes a wide right by Walker. Charles picked it off and fired a counter right in the closing moments of round four. Definitely a round for Walcott. Ezra Charles, the champion in dark trunks, trails as he answers the bell for round five. 
You notice that when Jersey Joe Walkett moves away, he shuffles rather than dances. That shuffling gait is one of the earmarks of his style. Walkett about to fire a right. Charles Flurry, but Walkett ties him up. You'll see Charles try a right, but Walkett was backing away. Hazard is best known as a defensive fighter. Watch him throughout this round, and you'll find him smothering Walkett's punches at short range. Charles is confident, but provides few thrills. As a result, he lacks crowd appeal, a fact that has made Ezard perhaps the most underrated champion of all time. Since defeating Al Murray in 1947, he's taken on all comers, including Joe Lewis and Joey Maxim, to rack up 24 victories in a row. Previously, Ezard had been knocked out only once by Lloyd Marshall in 1943, eight years before this fight. Walkett about to land a smashing right to the jaw. The best punch of the fight so far. It shook up the champion. Hazard recovering nicely, moving in, trying his right to the body, forcing Walkett to the ropes. Charles glances a right off Walkett's jaw, then follows through with a long-range left that snaps the challenger's head back. But he was moving away with a blow and seems unhurt. Walkett moves in with a left to the body, a right to the head. But Charles was moving away. Now, if you keep watching, you'll see Jersey Joe try a left hook at close range. Watch Walkett stagger Charles with a right to the jaw. Charles retaliates with a low right, a blow hidden from the referee. The end of round five, a better round for Walcott. Jersey Joe Walcott, the challenger in white trunks, is in control as he answers the bell for round six. Control gained through the superior firepower you saw him demonstrate in the two previous rounds. Charles, the lighter man, is favored tonight. But Walcott has been catching him coming in. Now he's trying to do it again. Now watch. A left right by Walcott will draw a counter left from Charles. You see the action developing more rapidly in this round as Jersey Joe becomes less cautious and opens up sooner. Hazard shuffling in. Charles tries a right to the body. It was partially blocked by Walcott. Now watch Joe come in with a left to the body, a right to the jaw. Jersey Joe Walcott making his strongest showing of the fight here in round six. Charles still waging a fine defensive battle. Watch him move inside a hard right by Walcott. You can see that Charles is by far the smaller man. He looks like a light heavyweight, and he very nearly is. Remember, he weighs just 182 against Joe Walcott's 194. Joe shuffles before catching a glancing right from Charles.
There's Walcott pounding his gloves together again. A sure sign that he's contemplating a surprise punch. A left with a good hook to the jaw. Charles has been failing to connect at short range, but he's quite successful at smothering his opponent's punches in close. You see? The defensive. That's Ezzard's kind of battle. Charles is wary. He's been hurt in previous rounds, and here in round six, he's been catching some jolting lefts from Walcott. Walcott about to land another left, this time to the ear. And Ezzard's mouth has begun to bleed at the end of the biggest round yet for Walcott. Ezzard Charles leaves his corner for round seven, destined to become the final frame of this scheduled 15 round bout for the world's heavyweight crown. The champion is trailing, while Jersey Joe Walcott has been growing progressively stronger. In a matter of seconds, the challenger will land the punch that made him world champion. Let's see how he does it. Keep your eye on his left. Walcott nervously taps his gloves. A desperate champion bullies him into the corner with a hard right. Charles is trying to regain control. Walcott senses his foe's failing strength. Now watch. Walcott's about to fire a left hook to the jaw. With every ounce of remaining energy, Charles attempts to beat the 10 count. And it's all over. At 55 seconds of the seventh round, Ezard Charles sheds his crown, and Jersey Joe Walcott becomes heavyweight champion of the world in one of the most stunning upsets of ring history. The record crowd in Forbes Field, Pittsburgh, is electrified by this dramatic finale. Ray Arcel, Charles Handler, helps the fallen next champion to his feet. For Ezzard, it's the second knockout he's ever suffered. The first time it's happened since Lloyd Marshall clipped him in 1943, eight years earlier. And so Arnold Raymond Cream, better known as Jersey Joe Walcott, the man who once supported a wife and six children on a $9.50 weekly relief check, was crowned heavyweight champion of the world. At the admitted age of 37, he became the oldest man ever to win the heavyweight title. Walcott thought he had attained his goal as world's heavyweight champion in 1947, when the press, the public, and the radio awarded him an unofficial decision over Joe Lewis. Even referee Ruby Goldstein had scored it for Walcott that night in Madison Square Garden. But the two judges called it for Lewis and a thoroughly disheartened Jersey Joe Walcott began to believe he'd never realize his ambition to be the champion.